Okay, we're gonna go get and get started. Welcome everybody. My name is Alec Harris and I am honored to serve as president of GIA Publications. I'm incredibly excited to welcome all of you onto this webinar today. It's gonna to be incredible, it's gonna be amazing. We have a top flight team. I'm so excited. We've been working on the habits of a successful beginner and musician project for many years. And now it is finally here and done. And Everyone on this panel has been working so hard, and I'm so excited to share their energy and enthusiasm, their knowledge, uh, and look forward to hearing from all of them. And a couple of just uh, housekeeping things. Again, if you're just joining, please click into the chat who you are and where you're from. We'd love to know who, who is on the call and on the webinar. And also, there's a Q&A panel as well, which you can click on and answer and enter your questions. I'll be sharing them with the team along the way. And we're gonna leave some space at the end of this webinar as well uh, to answer any specific questions that you might have. Uh, but with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with um, this amazing team. I'm gonna start with you, Kevin Boyle. Uh, Kevin is an amazing uh, middle school band director. He's now at uh, Cobb County in Georgia at Tap Middle School. He, act, he is the author of the percussion component in particular the habits materials and uh, really great to have him on board with us. Welcome Kevin. Thanks Alex. Marguerite Wilder is educator extraordinaire, uh, middle school band director through and through 30 years plus of experience and we are honored of course to have her as part of the GIA staff. Many of you may have seen her out on the road at many of the different conferences where she loves to go and talk to band directors and every other music educator uh, and share the energy and excitement. And she has also been uh, really wicked smart about keeping uh, the series on tap and real uh, for, uh, uh, for the needs of students and been an amazing asset to the project. Thank you. Jeff, thank you. Jeff Scott, uh, amazing middle school band director, uh, also a main author of the Habits Resources for Band. Uh, um, done incredible clinics, an amazing master teacher at Cario Middle School. That's, I said that right, right? Yeah, you got it. Close enough, okay. And, uh, and, uh, and with his amazing, again, practical instincts for how to make a uh, band method work, really excited to have you on board. Thanks, Alec. Thank you, and then of okay. course, thank you. And, and then Scott Rush, of course, master teacher, educator, uh, uh, formerly the head of arts at the Dorchester School District in South Carolina, a uh, major uh, master teacher himself. He was uh, a band director at uh, Mondo Schools as well for, for many years and an amazing advocate. The hard work, the number of hours that he's put in in pulling this all together, it's really just been uh, overwhelming. So thank you and welcome to everybody. So let me just start with a, a question to all of you and uh, maybe Scott, you can start out. Just tell us about the process of writing this beginning band method and tell us what goals you had with this team. So we're really excited about the release of this book. Um, I'm so glad that we're having the opportunity to share this with folks. Um, first, we knew at the very beginning that we wanted to have a great combination of traditional songs uh, because students like to play melodies. They love great songs. We wanted to have technique and skill building exercises. Uh, we wanted to have just high quality literature. The literature that's in the book um, is just top notch. And uh, the classical songs that we have in there are just some of the best known melodies. Uh, we put fun tunes in there, just some, some tunes for kids to have fun with. And then we put tunes in that were specifically um, for artistry and musicianship, to, to build artistry and musicianship. Uh, one of the things that is um, in all of the method books for the habit series were the components of playing. So the components of playing are like timing, tuning, tone, technique, balance, feeling, articulations, dynamics, phrasing, musicianship, you know, clarity, precision, all, it's all these words that are things that we're responsible for teaching. And we kind of took a mini version of that and we said, you know, we want to create a resource uh, for teachers where they can teach. And we started with the idea of teaching timing, tuning, tone, technique, balance, and blend. So we call those the four T's uh, plus balance and blend. 
And so we really wanted to take that, that idea of the components of playing and really give teachers a resource that was developmentally appropriate for young students. And the other thing that we had that was advantageous is we always knew where we were going, where we were writing to, because in our series, we wrote the series backwards. Uh, our first book that we wrote was Habits of Successful Musician, which is the high school book. Then we wrote Habits of Successful Middle School Musician, which we call our yellow book. So when we started the green book, we always knew what we were prepping towards or what we were prepping for. So if a teacher is using the yellow book, if they're using Habits of Successful Middle School Musician, they really need to get this beginner band method book because it will flow beautifully uh, from the green book into the yellow book. When we first started also, Jeff sent me three pages of notes of things that we just thought needed to go in this method book. And I did three pages of notes and we kind of combined those together. And some of those things were things that were not necessarily addressed in other methods. And so we kind of started with, the, that was kind of our blueprint. That was our, our starting point with the things that we put down on this list. And it was also really important for us to have supplemental materials uh, on a website that could change and evolve and we could add to, and especially during this time of COVID-19, that website is going to be uh, really, really important. Um, so I know we're gonna be sharing the Habits Universal a little bit later, but those were some of the things that, um, that we had at the very beginning. Jeff, what do you wanna uh, add to that? Jeff, you're unmuted. There we go. All right, we're good now. Technology, gotta love it. Anyway, um, when I started working on this, um, I came at it from a practical standpoint from a middle school teacher of three decades experience. And um, the things that I know my kids have trouble with. Uh, we see kids as they get older, they, they tend to drop out of band programs for certain reasons. They, they develop uh, deficiencies in certain areas because they may not be addressed with the material they're using in class. One of the things that, that we've done for years at Carrium is we have a, a separate rhythm course that we do. We actually have a full rhythm book and every day, every single rehearsal is part of uh, rhythm work before we get into the, to the melodic work. Because um, most kids don't have trouble with the notes. They have trouble with understanding when to play. And it, it becomes kind of like a foreign language. And if they get behind rhythmically, they're going, it's, it's putting them on a short track to drop. So one of the big things that I want to make sure we did in this book was develop the rhythmic content. Uh, we have it on in the book. We also have the habits online uh, components with the rhythm sheets with additional rhythm sheets that we can supplement and keep adding uh, more stuff to as we go. So there should never be a shortage of rhythm work. And we, one of the things that I notice a lot of books do, they tend to focus on, on the melodies and not so much the held notes and rest and ties and things like that. So we put a specific in, uh, emphasis on the things that kids don't do well, uh, just because we know that that's where they mess up. So we, we, we drove the rhythm lines towards that. The, um, the biggest thing probably for me that I really kind of insisted on wanting to have in the book was I wanted to develop the C Penta scale earlier. Um, in the method book we use, the 119 lines are in B flat. And by the time my kids start seeing naturals and sharps, they're so ingrained to play only B flat. I'm a trombone player, so we're locked into third position for the rest of our life. And uh, I just didn't see a reason why we couldn't play the E naturals and F sharp concerts and use the same range that the kids can do um, to make sure that we don't create a bias towards the flat side of the horn. I think it causes big problems in the music uh, publishing world because composers won't write natural and sharps because they know that most methods don't teach them early. So hopefully this book and this approach will open up uh, more compositional avenues for composers as well. And there's a big emphasis on making sure that we play in keys that are not just B flat and E flat. Yeah, uh, Jeff, we actually said we wanted to get them out of the B flat, E flat, A flat club. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> It's, uh, we, we really want the trombones and, 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 and the brass players and clarinet players to know what the middle fingers are on the horn and to know what fifth and second positions are. Uh, so that's, we don't have to have any more range. We don't mess up embouchures by introducing those earlier. We just take away the bias that, that's, that everything's in a flat key. Uh, 
the other big thing that I noticed over time in teaching beginner band every year is that the methods, and there's so much material to go through, and there is, we had to rework and, and work and work and work on this in the book, is to make sure we have enough repetition and sequencing of prior taught concepts. Um, sometimes uh, I notice uh, one instance in the book I, I've been using is they introduce a fairly difficult rhythm to the kids, and there's three examples, and that's it. You never see it again. And so when it comes up in concert music for my kids the next year or later in that year, they can't perform it uh, because they just have not seen it enough. And, and a lot of times we just, once a concept is taught, we don't go back and, and address it anymore. And so it gets dropped quicker. So what we try to do is make sure we, we used all the concepts rhythmically in, in as we progressed through the book, we went back and put the concept we had taught last week and the one we taught the week before into the melodies and songs so that they were constantly being revisiting those things. Yeah, we scaffold all that in. Re anything from you? Well, I, I, I love the fact that, that we spent time coming back. And uh, one time Jeff was talking about you know, he, he, he was working through a page and not every child got it. And, and the, the thing that we want our teachers to do is cycle it back into it, you know, roll over there again, because a, a child may not get it the first time. It may just be so foreign to them or they were having, you know, a bad hair day. I don't know. But, but if we go back again and give them chances to redo this, the repetition is the mastery of it. And they, they feel good about it. Oh, right, right, I understand how that went. And so we spend a lot of time um, doing the exercises that way, but also hoping that the teacher will swing back through and give the kid, you know, a review or another chance at the songs. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good for them. You wanna talk about the songs and the background accompaniments? Oh, I love the background accompaniments. They are just, for the most part, a hoot. Uh, Leslie Gilreath is our composer, and he 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 reached his inner middle school or beginning band student child. Uh, the, these uh, examples are a scream, and we're going to show let you listen to them. Even when the students are still trying to find the band room, their instrument, and to get the first note to you know to get a sound going usually it's just pretty boring you know we're just listening trying to get them started and stop together that's that's always a good thing and and but he's got such fabulous backgrounds there that that the kids think they've really accomplished something we're going to listen to a tenor sax uh performance of a new note and I would have my kids stand up and bow at the end. It sounds like a Star Wars intro or something, you know, for the kids to do. And th it's okay. They, they can work on these long tones, but it's so much fun. The other thing is it's so much fun working with Leslie because you can harass him, which I love to do with people. And, and I, you know, I went back through and he had some introductions and I said, but I really need a good pitch center because I'm adamant about having the kids sing. Can they sing the exercise? And uh, we, I've taught solfege, I know Kevin does, and that they can solfege the songs and they've got great, you know, they've got a pitch center to get started. And then even if they're just singing me, you know, whole note me, they, they're, they've got terrific music in the background feeling they've accomplished something and I think the parents will feel good. It sounds like they're really doing something instead of a cow dying somewhere in the trombone section in a back bedroom of the house. So, I, I love what Leslie's done. It's, it was awesome. Yeah. Well, there's so much to talk about and you know one of the things that is amazing about this method is it will work well I think even in distance learning environments we have of course the habits interactive components. Uh, one of the amazing innovations is uh, that students will be able to video themselves doing the exercises with assessments and then share them back with their teachers for those who elect to do the interactive component. But there's so many other really amazing innovative features of this. So what are some of the features in particular that uh, might be new to a beginning band method book or that are presented in a new way? Jeff, what, what do you think? 
Well, one of the things that I was really excited about and, and pushed um, you know, us on, on creating some valuable content was we have teacher tips that are specific to the line being taught. Um, you know, I thought back when I was a younger teacher and, and stuff, or if I was a high school band director, I've been a yo-yo director. I was high school, middle school, high school, middle school, and you're going back and forth. And sometimes, you know, you walk into a job and maybe, you know, we did, when I was in college, we didn't do a lot of, of middle school uh, prep on how to teach middle school kids. And so things would come up that maybe I wasn't aware was a problem for an 11 year old. To me, it wasn't really something I would have worried about, but to them, it was a huge uh, mountain to, to cover. So, um, what we did is we wrote in teacher tips that kind of tell you where mistakes are going to be and what you should be focusing on on the piece. Um, you know, where we anticipate that you may run into problems and what you should do about it. Or reminders for me, like as a trombone player, I, I never played an instrument that actually had a valve or a key on it. So uh, there were a lot of questions. And, uh, you know, especially we get into alternate fingerings and, you know, and why we would use this or alternating fingerings with the clarinets and things. And as a trombone player, it never really crossed my mind. But in our, in our book and our teacher tips, we will say, reminder that in measure three, you know, that C sharp should be played with the left hand or the right hand or use the alternate fingering here. Or for me as trombones, I, we, I, uh, I ask that we could put in, if you have trigger trombones, because my kids are renting trig beginner trigger trombones now, when is it appropriate to use it? Uh, you know, when is it not? And, and things like that. Um, I think it just makes you very aware if you pay attention to those teacher tips of what your kids are most likely going to do so you can offer the best instruction possible and things for you to listen to so you get the most out of the line and you teach it the way that you feel it comes across the best to your kids. Uh, I said earlier that the C pentascale thing is, is really huge for me. Um, I noticed my beginners, like I said, don't play uh, on the natural and sharps nearly as well as they do on the flats, but I also noticed that when we go to chromaticism and we start trying to teach a chromatic scale, we have all kinds of problems with that because the kids have only learned to be conditioned to go to certain fingerings and, and positions. So when we do the C pentascale, we can add the B flat and C pentascale together and we now have two thirds of a chromatic octave that the kids can play right off the bat. We can introduce it with two chromatic eighth notes and then four chromatic eighth notes. And before they know it, they've got most of the chromatic scale mastered because we've taught both sides of the instrument. And I think those for me were two of the really biggest things that, we, that we've done. Yeah, I'll tell you, Alec mentioned earlier about um, this working for distance learning. The first 24 pages of the conductor's edition are how we begin the school year. And we really modeled that after, Jeff, what you talked about earlier about the rhythm vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole system of rhythm vocabulary. Um, there's a whole system of teaching solfege if they choose to teach solfege. Um, there's how to play on their small instruments. There's a just a, an entire system of 24 pages of how to get started and if you combine that with the supplemental material that we have uh, it really can tell you how to get started this school year even if your students aren't starting on instruments uh, right off the bat um, and it's very extensive um, the solfege instruction uh, we started with just basic um, uh, we call it paint by number uh, ident identifiers uh, and we think it's really important for students to sing. We're all huge proponents of, of students singing. And in addition to the first, what we call the first days of school, which is what's it's titled at the beginning of the book, uh, we have supplemental solfege and we even have some sup supplemental solfege where uh, we show songs in the book uh, and how they can apply the solfege to those particular songs. Um, the other thing, and we'll show this in just a little bit, uh, is, is that high quality literature. It was really, really important to us um, that we put great literature, um, you know, you are what you eat, and we wanted to feed them great music. Because at the end of the day, our job is to teach students to fall in love with and resonate with music, and we want them to be artists, even though they're just a little piece of clay when we get them. Um, it's important that they learn artistry. Jeff, you want to talk about the, the green shaded boxes? Yeah, but first I want to hit, uh, piggyback a couple of things that you just said. Um, 
the melodies that we picked, uh, a lot of them lead to really great legato playing and, and melodic phrase shaping. And even though that may not be the thrust of that line, you can come back and revisit that later when you do the reviews and back up and go through it again. And you can focus on another component of playing mm -hmm. other than just making sure you're getting the rhythm counting and the accidentals and all the other technique stuff that's in there because the melodies are so good that you can go back and use them as, as expressive uh, components. Mm -hmm. That's one of the huge things. The other thing uh, Scott was saying about the technology piece of it, you know, the biggest thing that I get, and I get blown up until midnight uh, with people asking me, what are you teaching this year with COVID? Uh, we just found out we've had three different plans since Monday of what we're going to do. And uh, the last one is we may be all virtual. The one before that was some kids may show up and then you'll teach virtually uh, whenever you can get around to it. And so nobody knows what they're teaching. We just look at each other like we're speaking different languages going, I have no idea where to start. This big intro section that we have, the kind of the pre-band part of it with all the rhythm counting, the solfege and all that stuff, man, that could eat up a lot of that first nine weeks when they're going virtual until they can get back in a classroom. And you could have a really strong base for what your kids are going to know musically before you actually have to get into a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, okay. that, I think that's going to be really big, especially this year. It's going to be a, a real issue for us. The shaded box thing that we're talking about, this was another thing I really wanted to see in the book. You know, I can look through a score and I can tell you every note that every instrument is going to miss because I know my kids and where their mental deficiencies are at 11 years old. And so they're just not going to carry that accidental. If you see a sharp on or a flat on the end of two and it comes back on four, they'll miss it every bloody time. Um, and so if it's in a key that's not necessarily B flat or E flat, we know where that's going to go. So what we did is we shade new concepts and uh, hidden accidental notes. The first time or two we use it, or if we use a new key signature they're unfamiliar with, we don't tell them specifically what to look for. They know if they see the green shaded box, they should pay particular attention to something that we've been discussing. And for, we only do it for a couple of lines when we introduce a new concept, but what it does is it trains the kids to be aware of their surroundings and why they're doing what they're doing. And I think that's, I think it's going to really help. Uh, sometimes, you know, for me, even if it's an oboe or something, uh, I think the shaded box will probably help me figure out what I'm supposed to say. Uh, cause I might slide right past it too. And if I see my green shaded box, I can go figure out what I was supposed to tell the oboes. So uh, I think that's a, a really big thing. Reed, you, you want to tell them about the rhythm charts? I do. I do. I, I'm going to bop back to uh, uh, the solfege again, because if the ki we give up so often when we teach instrumental music, we give up our grandest crutch, which is singing and, and using our voice and that we understand what the kids hear and what they're thinking about. You know, I'll ask them to, to sing something and, and I'll say, is, is that how the song goes? And they go, no, I don't think so. You know, if we get so busy into executive skills, pushing the right button down at the right time, some type of sound will come out. But if they've heard it first, they're not always editing what they hear. You know, that they know how that song's gonna, gonna go. Um, what I'm supposed to be talking about are the, the rhythm charts. We, we have prepped, uh, just like we did in the yellow book or the middle school, book, we have prepped with um, a rhythm, one or two rhythm, rhythmic exercises where we suggest your kids count and clap and pat their foot and go through this. The big disconnect with a lot of uh, younger students is that they, they can count and clap this great and we put notation and melody with the same rhythm and they think it's something totally different. And so that we've spent time building them up, you know, that, that we've had that song, this little melody is that rhythm, and then it will bleed into the next song where it's an actual real song that would have that rhythm. So we've, sometimes we've prepped them up to four, you know, three, three preps before we actually got to the, to the song. Because a lot of time, like I said, they can count and clap it, but then they just go off the deep end when they have to add notation and the, to realize that. And we found that, that was a huge thing for the teachers. They really liked it about the yellow book and we, we did that here. Uh, Jeff wrote a whole bunch of six, eight 
um, counting exercises, and I spent time turning those exercises into tune so that we can continue that concept. And I think that's a, a great link for the kids to get from point A to point B. We've got a supplemental steps in there. Well, there's about six eights down the road. I want to say something about the six eight though. I, I wanted to say that because I know that some people here would say, oh my God, six eight and in a beginner method, there's no way this is crazy. No, it's not. If you teach the rhythm set, the rhythm book, the way it's supposed to be taught, they learned that they learned that the eighth note is the pulse very very early in in my rhythm book that i use with my class we're playing five four and seven four on the first page of the rhythm book because it isn't so ingrained that everything's in four and that the quarter notes the only beat that matters uh, if you teach the rhythm book in the subdivision the way it's presented by the end of the first year you will be playing six eight and the kids will understand how to count it just fine uh, we've been doing it for years we've never had a group that couldn't do it and so I know that that sounds for people who've never approached that in the first year, that that may be ambitious, but it's really not if you follow the program to get there. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how we approach clarinets because clarinets in, in middle school band are a real uh, interesting topic. And I have seen some very strange things in, in playing tests and auditions. Uh, I call it the magic pinky. And it's down here where they have like a double jointed thing. So they get to all four of them down here. There's some over here, but they don't know what they do. This is literally only the C key after you play the B over the break. That's what this whole hand does. There's a couple of other keys over there and they don't know what they do. Uh, on the bottom uh, key, they don't know the G sharp and they certainly don't know the F sharp down there. They've got the E and the F, pretty good with those two. The other, the other two, we take a shot. If it's not the E or the F, we'll just press one of those and hope it's right. So, uh, so what we did is we notate uh, in the book, when you see the low notes down there, which hand you should be playing them on, uh, left or right. And the way that they come up in the melody, if you've already used the right hand, you have to use the left hand the next time. Uh, and you have to alternate back and forth to use the correct technique. Um, we can discuss the sliver keys and alternate fingerings. Uh, the throat tones, big thing we do with the throat tones is, you know, there's a horrible sound on a clarinet in middle school. And, and we always teach our kids to have the right hand down on those notes, but they don't really know what that means. We say it, we yell it while they're playing and they press it down for a second and then they let it up when they think it's been long enough. So what we do through the piece is we notate when you're playing in the throat tones with a line underneath it that you keep the right hand down the entire time and where it should be released. And within several, after several lines of doing that, the kids really do understand how to use that to improve their tone quality. Um, th there's a, uh, a lot of those things that we, we like to do um, to help keep the clarinet technique on track and, and so that they don't develop really bad habits and just go to what I call their favorite fingering, which is always going to be the right hand. So uh, I think that's really important. And for a lot of directors, that can be an issue that we can overlook a lot because it's hidden behind the stand sometimes. Great. So we also have um, enharmonic notes. Uh, we have an enharmonic chromatic ladder that teaches them in harmonic notes and an inharmonic gain, uh, which we think is uh, very valuable. Uh, and then uh, we also, for oboes, we have uh, four left and right indicators uh, for oboes uh, where, the, where that F dilemma appears. Um, so uh, those are just some of the things that we've got, you know, that are unique to the book. Great. Especially like the uh, the oboe players, the, the the videos by our master teachers on each instrument, they spend time showing that and they'll do close-ups mm -hmm. because uh, some of the kids, as Jeff says, are very creative in their fingerings, and uh, you know we need we need uh, to know that um, we're not all experts on every single instrument, especially when we're younger beginning teachers. And uh, I, I think we've taken some of the mystery out of it. So we've, it had a, we've had a couple questions in the chat. One of them is, has the literature been screened for culturally insensitive songs? The answer is yes. We had to take a couple of songs out, actually, um, as part of the process. Mm -hmm. Another one is, uh, will we be discussing the Habits Universal platform uh, on this call, which of course I think that is too. So hold on, we'll get to there uh, in just a second. Yep. I, I'm curious, uh, Jeff and Reed, if you see this is only a one-year book or if you see it as a potential, as a carryover year method as well. 
Well, you know, most of the times when, when we're in our class with our, with our previous method book, um, depending on the pace of the class and how many times we've been interrupted, we, either, we can either get through the entire method or we may not quite get there. And sometimes you're left with that awkward gap at the end of it. This book is a challenging book. It presents a lot of concepts. And used correctly, you can go back through and really enhance your band's sound by repeating things. I don't see this as just a beginner book. I think this book will take you through the first year and a half especially if you teach in places where that you don't see your kids five days a week. For clarity, I see my kids five days a week, 45 minutes a day, unless there's a standardized testing three days every week and, and, or a worldwide pandemic. And then now, obviously, this year, we, we are all teaching two beginner bands. We have a seventh grade beginner band or second year and a first year beginner band. And even the ones that were there for last year don't remember anything. So uh, yeah, this year in particular, th this is gonna be a book that's gonna last you longer than a year. If you don't have band every day or you have shorter classes, you're gonna, you can use this to, to bridge the gap in, into the harder literature in seventh grade. And we've, we've had a lot of people say that they're going to use this book with their second year students. Well, we, we even label it, you know, first year and beyond uh, because we want all the kids to get mastery and you don't just all of a sudden use a second book because it's the second year because mm -hmm. we want to keep the kids moving also they don't have to stop you know like if if you had miraculously a fantastic band in today's time with the virus and everybody got through with it you know then you'd have to stop get books going again where th this will carry them on you know a year and a half and and we said that Running back about Jeff saying, you know, to review it again, we field tested this book and we had a lot of different teachers. And one of the comments one time was, there's a lot of concepts that you've got running in this particular song. But we'll say, cue in on one and then add another and then add another. That's just kind of how, how we do our, our rehearsals. We're really working for this to be stabilized. And so, don't try to do all four concepts for the song the first time through. Spread it out. Well, in some, yeah, in some cases we change things, uh, but in most cases what we do is we explain how to use the components of playing to make that application. Well, one of the things, like we was just saying on this, what's that? I said when they understood how to apply the components of playing, it all made sense. Well, one of the things that Reet was talking about there, and this is a huge thing that I think is really important for you to do as a teacher anyway, is when you go through a book, if you just go number to number to number through the book, there are a certain number of kids, let's say the ones who don't practice, uh, who are going to struggle. And the first time through, they're not gonna get it. And if you just keep rolling through the book, you're gonna lose those kids. Uh, it may not be your fault for pacing, it may be the fact that they've just been slack and haven't done anything and they are barely hanging onto the caboose of the train. And so when you have more than one concept in a line and you focus on just one priority, you go back and review through it, it gives that kid who's struggling to hang on a second and third shot at the same thing. And by the time that, you know, the other kids are doing all the phrasing and they're getting all the advanced stuff here, at least that kid that hasn't taken the horn home in three months uh, has figured out most of it by then because you have given him a chance, a second and third run at understanding a concept that might have just breezed right past him. So uh, I think that's really important when you're doing this. And the melodic content is good enough that you can really use it to, to work multiple things at the same time. Great. Kevin, I got to ask you to talk a little bit about the percussion book and what are the things that you think are unique features of the percussion book? Yeah, man. Um, you know, when we started the book, I wanted to make sure that we had the melodic material side by side with the the accessory percussion and the snare drum stuff so the kids could see that they, they work together, go hand in hand. Uh, we took the keyboard parts and gave sticking to all the songs. Uh, you know, normally in a percussion only method, you're going to be in the key of C to start with. So you only have a left to right motion you're dealing with. But when we're in the band method, we're in B flat. So we immediately have this kind of forward and back motion to B flat and E flat. And so the sticking being there, you know, alleviates the guesswork on the student part. They, they know exactly where to go when. Uh, we gave them uh, the sticking coming off of a roll so they would go the right direction in the keyboard. Again, just to, to have that correct movement built in from the beginning without any guessing is, is a really cool part. Uh, the rudimental side of the book is very methodical and functional. 
Uh, we introduced the four basic strokes first. You know, we have the rebound stroke, down stroke, up stroke, and multiple bounce stroke, and they all have exercises that build out of them, building into the rudiments. And we developed the rudiments, you know, one hand at a time, and then put them together, which is nothing new, uh, but it's not really flushed out well in other beginner books. It's done great in percussion books, but full band books is really one big component that's been lacking. And so these, we, we cover 15 of the major rudiments that they're gonna see at all state, you know, region, uh, all their percussion ensemble music uh, and all their band literature as well. Uh, sticking patterns, uh, common sticking patterns like right hand lead uh, and things like skeleton rhythms for buzz rolls and double stroke rolls are also uh, developed through this as well. So the students understand when they're playing a buzz roll or a double stroke roll that there is a, a rhythm happening while they're sustaining that roll. That's a big component that again, if you see like a whole note with a buzz, that's not gonna give the kids any guidelines, but we have them set up into that. Um, we cover also 12 of the most common accessory percussion instruments that they're gonna play in band and percussion ensemble, which is pretty big. We include timpani in this. Uh, even with this, we did uh, some multi-percussion songs. So one student will be playing two or more instruments at one time. Um, which develops not just their coordination, but also their ears. Because if you're playing, you know, triangle and suspended cymbal at the same time, you can't play them with the same touch. You have to be lighter on the triangle. You got to be sensitive to these things musically. And so we wanted to start building that in their ears and their coordination. Um, that also kind of sets them up for some drum set coordination. Later, we have some foot tap exercises. So they're reading multiple lines and spaces and on just the drum side of the book. So there's not really um, any fluff in this percussion book. I wanted to make sure that everything was applicable and that these kids are gonna be prepared for you know the rest of their time in band and percussion with a really good foundation. We got some great feedback doing the field testing and the percussion stuff. Yeah, cool. Really great stuff. Okay, so now let's, uh, Scott, maybe you can take us through a little bit of the website, Habits Universal, and show us what are the innovations there. Absolutely, it would be a pleasure. So, um, Here's the website, it's habitsuniversal.com. Um, there are various things here across the top. I'll take you through some of these. Uh, the first one are two um, tabs for videos. Uh, the first one are video exercises that if you click on it, um, the students will need their um, access code from their book and they can click on it and it takes them to every exercise in their method book by their coach. Uh, it's a video uh, and they can access um, each individual exercise. Yeah, and I just want to emphasize the musicianship, every single song modeled in video form, every single uh, exercise for, unique for each instrument. It's really remarkable. I think never been done before with the method book. And we have some fantastic coaches. They are really good. Under the clinic videos, you can see that we have various um, all the instruments and what we have here is essentially startup clinic videos um, that take them from an introduction all the way through their first sounds, putting the instrument together, um, instrument care and maintenance. I'll give you an example of um, just one of these. This is Irving Ray who's in Pershing Zone and this is his introduction video. You guys let me know if you can hear it. Hi, my name is Dr. Irving Ray, and I will be your euphonium coach for Habits for Successful Beginner Band Music. For starters, you've chosen the most beautiful sounding instrument out of all the woodwind and brass instruments. That's true. If you translate the word euphonium from Greek to English, that's the definition you find, beautiful sounding. And I personally love to play the euphonium for that exact reason. Every time I play for someone who's never heard what a euphonium sounds like, the reaction I always get is, wow, what a gorgeous tone. <laughs> So after one year, all of your euphoniums will sound just like Irving. Uh, and that will be true for all the coaches. 
Uh, so if you, you know, if you click on any of these, uh, you can actually go through the startup clinics and you can see each coach does about 12 to 15 videos uh, to take students through some concept, whether it's tonguing on the instrument, um, just whatever. Um, so that's kind of how that, that works. On this tab, you have all the accompaniment tracks. Um, students, we talked about the accompaniment tracks earlier. Students will love to play with accompaniment tracks. Uh, this is a way for them um, to be able to access those accompaniment tracks. You also notice down here at the bottom, it says uh, horns and fifths. Uh, we didn't really talk about that, but we did write the horns there, split pages for horns where they're in fifths um, or they're in unison with the ensemble and we have accompaniment tracks with them. Um, I'm a horn player, so I can say they're special. Um, then under resources, we have uh, a lot of things that I'll try to take you through first. So earlier we were talking about the supplemental rhythm charts. So we have the rhythm charts in the beginning of the book, we call the first day's rhythm charts. And then we have, in addition to that, 20 additional rhythm charts that you can use with your students. So it would look like, one would look kind of like this. And not only could you use this with your students, this would work great during COVID-19 time, but not only could you do that, but you could read these left to right, but you could read them up and down. Um, and so you've got a series of 20 rhythm charts um, that you can sequence, you know, however you'd like to sequence those, and you can go as slow or as fast as you'd like to go. Um, the next thing we have are the first day's examples, and, and you might say, well, why is that important? We talked about the first 24 pages of the book, and so if you want to use the first 24 pages of, I'm talking about of the conductor's edition, if you want to use the first 24 pages of the conductor's edition and you want to use it online, you can actually take the graphics from the conductor edition, which we've provided for you here, and pop them up on the screen for students. So it's a way for you to use that, the book, as Jeff indicated uh, earlier to you, that's a way for, for that to happen, and you can use, uh, use these materials. Um, the next thing we have are drones. So you might say to yourself, hmm, I would really love to have a Yamaha Harmony director, uh, but I don't have one right now, so you can use drones off the website. They're right here. Um, the next thing we have are clarinet register break exercises. Um, the way the clarinets work in the book is after exercise 27, we start taking them to clarinets only page. And from exercise 27 to exercise 73 in the book, they do slow methodical work to get them over the break. After they've done that, there are a couple of things you can do. This is just a supplemental page that they can use to teach them to go over the break. Uh, but we encourage you to do the, uh, the exercises in the book first. Um, we also have, let's say you decide that when you get to the clarinets only pages, hey, I'd like to do that with full band. Well, we have parts right here for the clarinets only pages. You can use, you can do the clarinets only pages with full band if you like. We talked about solfege. In addition to what's in the book, which starts out pretty simple, we have some supplemental songs, uh, and like I said earlier, it kind of looks like paint by number, and that's what that looks like. And then we also have some songs in the book, that if you want to use the songs in the book, we've given you a few starter tunes of how you can use solfege with the students, and we've given the number and how they can use it. Um, in addition to that, we have the Masters of the Alphabet game. If you have not done this with your students, COVID-19 is the time to teach them this exercise. They learn the musical alphabet forwards and backwards. You know, most students, they can say the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but they can't say G, F, E, B, C, B, A. And so this exercise um, does that for them. Um, we have something called common hand position uh, and posture problems for all the different instruments. And we've given you some tips for how to work with students on those particular things. Um, and we have um, some other things down here that um, will be forthcoming. We have about 15 duets that we've put on there if you wanna use, especially during COVID-19, if you want a couple of kids to get together and play duets virtually, we've got some duets that'll be uh, put up there very, very shortly. And then just a couple of more things on here before I, we uh, just mention Habits Universal Interactive. We have our team of people that's here. 
And we have our series, which includes all the books in the Habit series and information about each of those books. And then services. So if you'd like for one of us to come do a teacher in service at your school district, we'd love to do that. And that this tells you about some of the clinics that we do. And we will do clinics on the new beginner band method book. Habits Universal Interactive is right here. It's powered um, by Music First. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. We're not going to dig into the details of this today because it literally would take the whole hour. So we're going to do um, a tutorial for you guys. We'll do another webinar and a tutorial. But basically, it's what I, I call, it's when Sight Reading Factory marries Flipgrid. Um, it's video and video technology. Um, the teacher uh, makes the assignment, the student can go on. The, um, the MP3 uh, sound is our, the, our teachers, our, our professional teachers. Uh, so the students can listen to that um, while they're you know, on Habits Universal Interactive. They can also use the accompaniment to submit assignments. And um, if you've ever used a video um, kind of platform, you know, the students will submit videos to you and you can go back in and you can submit a video back to them. Um, that, this tab will be, we've got a little bit of beta testing to do in the next two days. This should be up and running in the next two days. If you click on it right now, it takes you to music first and this will look a little bit different uh, in the next two days. Yeah, so just to let everyone know the uh, music first and match my sound uh, powers the Habits Universal Interactive platform. The main difference being, of course, this, op this option for students to videotape themselves doing the assignments and doing the assessments and then submitting those uh, back to their teacher, which is really uh, innovative, never been done before, and developed unique for us for this launch. So we're very excited about that component. And uh, Scott, can you maybe play one of those accompaniment tracks real quick? I think it'd be fun for folks to hear that. Sure. Uh, let me, I'm going to show you a video, actually. Um, Share your screen again. Yeah. Yep. Give me just one second. All right. Check this out. Coach's video, which is an example of a traditional song introduced in the book. So this is what they would see if they were just listening to the coach. same exercise with a spectacular background accompaniment. Even if students are at the beginning of the learning process and are only playing one note, they can have fun performing with a background accompaniment. In addition to individual mallet and battery videos of percussion, there are several videos that show examples of multi-percussion performance.
concerted effort throughout the book to provide some of the best known classical melodies so that students can be exposed to wonderful literature from the start. have songs that tug at your heart and teach expression, artistry, and musicianship. Those are some of the accompaniment tracks uh, for some of the tunes in the book. I, I want to say there, the, the quality is much better than we are hearing secondhand on, on this. When, when the kids hear it live, you can hear all the balance and great sounds that are being played. Yep. Great. So, so, um, Scott, you mentioned a possible way for school districts to deal with uh, and pay for the Habits Universal uh, uh, interactive piece, and we should maybe talk a little bit about that. I know we've touched on it. It is an additional charge. I think it's $8 per seat, uh, but uh, you had some ideas about how folks can help. Yeah, so, um, you know, being a former director of fine and performing arts, um, you know, school districts get Title II funds uh, to pay for professional development and when you uh, incorporate professional development, especially right now in COVID-19, a lot of school districts are using Title II money uh, to pay for technology and then training for that technology. I uh, talked to my colleague today and, and, and that's what they're doing in, in our local district. So uh, I would encourage people, um, knowing that we're going into this you know, uh, new uh, version of teaching right now, to explore using Title II funds in your district uh, to get the technology piece and also to get training because we'd love to, to uh, do a one-on-one -on -one professional development with you uh, virtually to kind of show you how it all works. So Jeff, tell us why right now you think this, these particular component, components, the video and video components, the features of Habits Universal Interactive, why, why is that so important in this moment? Well, um, because we're all redefining what it means to be a music teacher right now. Um, COVID-19 has thrown us into a world where we're not really sure what that looks like for us. And this, uh, the components of the online stuff paired with the book give us a fantastic way to teach remotely or in any combination of whatever we're given. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have kids go without any quality instruction. The video instructors can, can walk through and demonstrate for the kids how to play uh, the upcoming exercises, demonstrate what a good tone quality is and phrase shaping and, and all the elements of, of good playing. And they have that at their fingertips as if they cannot be in a classroom. And I think, you know, that's very important no matter when you are, uh, where you are and when you are learning. But it's extremely important right now because it's the key to our survival and what we do. The other two things about this that's so important is that it's, um, instruction this year is going to have a lot of differentiated instruction. Uh, kids are going to be all over the place and different levels, different grades. We're not going to be on the same page all the time. And if a child who's very advanced can go faster, they have every tool they could possibly want to be able to do that. And if a child is struggling because they're not seeing you every day, there's a ton of resource material there for them to go back and see the proper examples uh, so that they can stay caught up with where you want them to be. Um, just from an everyday standpoint, a lot of kids in your class are very afraid to play in front of each other. 
and they're afraid to participate at that level. You'll, you'll probably notice that when you ask for volunteers, it's the same 10 kids and there's 50 or 60 sitting there who never raised their hand. All these components and all this technology allows them to be the performer that they really want to be, but are scared to death to try to be in front of other kids. And they can send it to you in a really safe environment and talk to you about what it means, uh, you know, what they need to do to get better. It's, it's a way to make it safe for them to feel good about themselves. But I, I think what we really tried to do with this is we tried to give you the most efficient and effective way for you and your kids to, to grow your musical toolbox and your skills to, to be as good as you can be. I, I think that's really huge for this project. Well, another part of that too is that the interactive piece have a back end grade book. And when they play the video example, <clears throat> excuse me, the grade goes directly into the grade book. So that will be a time saver for teachers as well. Great. So we're going to wrap up in a couple of minutes. If any of the folks on the webinar have specific questions, they can post them in the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer them. But really, uh, any final thoughts from this team? Uh, Jeff, start with you. No, I, I think I think that the, this is the right answer for, for bands at the point in time we are in history right now. Um, it, it's a kind of a weird rollout for a new method book. You'd love to be out there talking about it every day. But there, there's probably never been a greater need for, for this kind of interaction between the written book and the technology reinforcement. Um, I, I think this is a, a, a really good method because we've, we've broached some of the biggest weaknesses for bands and, and, and figured out effective ways to eliminate some of those. Um, and we also uh, have, have done it with really quality material. Uh, yeah. I, read. Okay. The thing, one of the things I really love about having our private teachers for, for each student, they hear great tone and great pitch and great intonation. And, and I encourage my kids to play along with them, see if they can hide in the sound. You heard a few minutes ago, the fabulous sound of, from the flute instructor and she was playing with vibrato. I've used that type of thing before. I never mentioned the word bravado, but my kids started playing that because this is what they hear in their mind's ear. This is what the sound in, in their, their being, this is what I need to sound like as a euphonium player or clarinet player. I think especially too, if, if um, they have instruction where they just are, are um, you know, teaching the flutes or just, just teaching the clarinets uh, in this new model, these videos are a game changer. Evan, do you have anything you want to add? I think we put together a really, really good instructional curriculum for the beginning band. I think I don't think there's anything out, out there like it right now. I think the like everything they've said, the videos, the music first component, uh, the pacing, I think it's phenomenal. I, I can't wait to get started with it. Great. Scott, do you have any last words? I want to thank everyone to be for being on the panel. I couldn't be more excited, more energized you know, seeing all the benefits of the field testing and how that's really helped refine all of the hours he worked, uh, labored over each note of each instrument, making sure everything aligned, everything worked, everything was in range and uh, all of the selection of the literature, the way you sequenced it, uh, really amazing, amazing work. So thank you all so much. Scott, do you have any, any final words? Well, just ultimately we want bands to perform better. We want to put, um, tools and teachers toolboxes and we want students to fall in love with and resonate with with music now and throughout their lifetime and we think this book does all of that great thank you so much thanks everybody enjoy the rest of your day thank you guys take care, take care.